guys, welcome back to Reading with Leanne. Today we are going to read the book Fly Guy Presents Weather. This is by Ted Arnold. Do you see our narrator here? He's Fly Guy. Or just a fly. <laughs> so let's check out some crazy weather together in this book. Opening it up, we see a boy had a pet fly named Fly Guy. Fly Guy could say the boy's name. Buzz. Okay, here are our two main characters, Buzz and Fly Guy. Buzz and Fly Guy were visiting a weather station. Weather station, visitor entrance. Whoa, Buzz said to Fly Guy, it's windy. Let's get out of the cold, Fly Guy's holding on. They headed for the door and into the weather station. Weather is all around us and it changes all the time. It affects what people wear and do each day. When it's sunny, people wear sunglasses. When it's cold, people bundle up in warm coats. When it rains, people carry umbrellas, and they may even wear rain boots. Buzz says, I wear sunscreen when I'm playing outside too. So why does the weather change? Well, Earth's weather is controlled by the sun. Changes in weather are caused by changes in Earth's atmosphere. Atmosphere surrounds Earth and is made up of air and water. When air moves, it's called the wind. A breeze is a slow moving wind. Wind that moves quickly is called a gale. A very strong gale can damage trees and homes. Maybe you've experienced your umbrella turning inside out. Buzz says, our weather starts in outer space. Now, three quarters, that means three out of four, of Earth's surface is covered in water. Water moves between the ground and the air. It has three forms, liquid, solid, and gas. So when water's on the ground, right, it might be liquid water. It might be solid water like snow and ice. Think about when you're boiling water, right? It can float up, it leaves the ground, it turns into a gas. When sun warms water on earth, the water turns from a liquid to gas. Then it rises into the air, forming clouds. As the water gets cooler, the water changes from a gas back to liquid or a solid. It can fall to earth as rain, hail, or snow. This is called the water cycle. So let's take a look at our image. So we have our ocean. When the ocean gets really, really, really hot, it's evaporation and it turns into a cloud. When the cloud gets kind of cold, there's precipitation, water, hail, or snow, and it comes back to the ground. So it kind of moves around in a circle. Raindrops, points out Fly Guy. Raindrops are not shaped like teardrops. They're more like hamburger buns. That's a fun fact because whenever I draw rain, I make them into tear shapes. But when they're falling, they're actually kind of falling flat like this. <laughs> hamburger rain. Now, there's different kinds of clouds, right? Clouds form when water rises into the air. There are different types of clouds. The Cirrus clouds are wispy and thin and made up of ice. The cumulus cloud 
clouds are fluffy and made up of water. These clouds look like cotton candy. The stratus clouds are thick and flat. Fog is a stratus cloud on the ground. So when you see fog, it's just, you can think of a cloud that fell down. Cumulonimbus clouds are tall and gray and made up of ice and water. They are also called thunder clouds. They can cause heavy rains, lightning, or even tornadoes. So, you could study the clouds in the sky. You know what kind of weather is going to come. Precipitation is rain, hail, or snow. When water droplets fall back to earth as liquid, they're called rain. If it rains too much, the ground may not be able to absorb the extra water. Water can pool in puddles. When puddles become large and cover a lot of land, this is called flooding. This person's car has turned into a boat. But if it doesn't rain enough, the ground becomes dry. When it doesn't rain for an unusually long period of time, it's called a drought. Buzz looks at a rainbow. Here's a fun fact. The colors of the rainbow are always in the same order. So the color that you see here, it's always in this order. They're not going to be mixed up. Sometimes winds make ice go up and down inside a storm cloud. Layers of ice stick together forming balls. These ice balls become hail. Hail can be smaller than a pea or larger than a grapefruit. You don't want that hail to hit you or your car or your house. If it is cold enough, snow crystals can grow inside a cloud and form snowflakes. Every snowflake is different. When it is very windy and snowy, this is called a blizzard. During a blizzard, winds can blow as fast as 45 miles per hour. Look, two people are buried. The snowplow is working hard. One blizzard dropped about 50 inches of snow in only 36 hours. Look at the New York blizzard in 1888. 50 inches, that's probably as tall as you. So 50 inches of snow, can you imagine? In just under two days, that's how much snow fell. What about lightning? Lightning is a giant electric spark. Electricity is created when water drops freeze alongside rain and wind inside a storm cloud. The electricity builds up until it flashes outside of the cloud as lightning. Lightning is hotter than the surface of the sun. When it strikes, the air gets so hot that it makes sound waves vibrate. This creates a boom of thunder. Lightning is dangerous. <gasps> Look at the tree struck by lightning. Mm. Stay indoors if you see lightning. If you are outdoors, crouch down and stay away from tall objects. Buzz warns us, remember when thunder roars, head indoors. Remember that little rhyme. Lightning likes to strike tall things, so that's why we want to stay away from things like the tall tree. Next, hurricanes. Hurricanes are the strongest storms on earth. They bring heavy rain, high winds, rough waves, and floods to coastlines. This storm has a different name depending on where it forms. In the Atlantic Ocean, it is called a hurricane. In the Indian and South Pacific Oceans, it is called a tropical cyclone. And in the North Pacific Ocean, it is called a typhoon. 
So how do you get this really, really strong storm? A hurricane forms when a group of thunderstorms spin over warm oceans. As this group of storms become stronger, wind reaches to its center. This causes the entire group to spin, forming one massive storm. From space, a hurricane looks like a giant pinwheel, like a spiral. And the spiral can come out and hit coastlines and flood places. Now, a funnel cloud can form when a powerful thunderstorm meets winds that change direction as they move up into the sky. As the funnel cloud touches the ground, it is called a tornado. Tornadoes can do a lot of damage. They have some of the strongest winds on earth. They can lift cows, cars, and even homes off the ground. Here's some images of tornado damage. Tornado Alley in the United States has more reported tornadoes than anywhere else in the world. People use underground shelters during tornadoes. If you hear a tornado siren, seek shelter right away. Most tornadoes last for just 10 minutes. It's like an underground bunker. Weather can get weird. Tornadoes that form over water are called water spouts. A water spout does not suck up water, but it can suck up frogs or other small animals. Animals can stay trapped in the cloud until they fall from the sky, like rain. Uh-oh, can you imagine a frog sucked up, 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 and then it's raining frogs? A dust storm can happen when powerful winds blow across dry lands. Clouds of dust and sand fill the air. Be really hard to see. Right, you have to also, Buzz is wearing a mask here so that the dirt doesn't go into his mouth. A black blizzard is another name for a dust storm. Meteorologists are scientists who study changes in weather. They use many tools. Weather balloons and radar systems collect information about the atmosphere. Look here, we have a radar, a radar image, a weather balloon. Over here, Bud says a wind vane shows which way the wind blows. Some meteorologists tell people what the weather might be like in the future. This is called a forecast, right? What, what the weather will be like tomorrow or a week from now. Other meteorologists follow storms so they can better understand them. Some people call them storm chasers. Yikes! The climate is what the weather conditions are usually like in an area. There are four main climates, temperate, tropical, desert, and polar. They're listed out on the map. I live in Vancouver, so that looks like it's a temperate climate. In a temperate climate, winters are cold and summers are warm. Winter, summer. A tropical climate is warm and humid almost all the time. Humidity is the measurement of how full of water the air is. When the humidity is very high, fog and clouds can form. So um, if you look at tropical places, they're light green on the map, right? So the air might feel very wet there, feel sticky. A desert climate is dry all year. It almost never rains. That's yellow on the map. And a polar climate is cold. There are summer days when it never gets dark and winter days when it is always dark. And they say a fun fact here, Antarctica, where the penguins live, is both a polar climate and a desert climate. How does that work? Well, it's a polar climate because it's super, super cold. And it's also considered a desert climate because it's also very dry. It does not really snow or rain there. So 
So we learned about meteorologists, right? Now we learned about climate. So what is a climatologist? A climatologist is a scientist who studies Earth's climates. Earth's climates are changing. Climate change can make weather change too. Global warming is melting glaciers, which adds more water to Earth's oceans, right? As the ice melts, the water gets higher. More water in the atmosphere may mean more storms in some places and fewer in others. So let's look at some things that happen because of climate change. Flash floods, a melting glacier, a forest fire. So here is Buzz and Fly Guy's tips to help Earth. One, use less energy. Turn off lights when you don't need them. Two, don't waste water. Take shorter showers. Three, recycle four plant trees. Please keep Earth healthy. On Arbor Day, Buzz and Fly Guy planted a tree. Then it started to rain. This is perfect weather for our little tree, said Buzz. Yes, said Fly Guy. So, Buzz and Fly Guy cannot wait for their next field trip. We're finished this one here. This is called Fly Guy Presents Weather by Ted Arnold. I learned so much here. I hope you learned a lot with me. Thank you.